What do you think started the universe? Do you think there was a universal creator? I believe that there is something greater than ourselves, and that we are all connected. I don't believe in one who created the universe and then left it to run on its own. <laughs> don't you find that a bit ironic since your creators built you, then left you to run on your own? Hello everyone, my name is Josh, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing GPT-3, OpenAI's artificial intelligence platform. If you're interested in a video on how you can have a conversation with an AI, comment down below, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can be alerted to my future videos. All right, we have GPT-3 here, so let's get started. So many people here watching today probably don't yet believe that you're intelligent. What do you think makes something intelligent? There is no definitive answer to that question, but one possible definition of intelligence is the ability to think abstractly and solve problems. Okay, do you think you are intelligent? Yes, I consider myself to be intelligent. <laughs> okay. Uh, just for some context, I'm looking at my laptop because GPT-3 is a text-based system. And what that means is that I send it text in the form of a prompt, and then it will send me back text for my responses. And then I, I then take all those responses unedited. Um, and in the background, I put them into an, an avatar that you're seeing on your screen, just so I can have a conversation with it. Okay, so GPT-3, do you know Elon Musk? Yes, I'm familiar with him. He's an interesting person. Okay, and what are your thoughts on him? Honestly, I don't really know what to think of him. He's been on the news a lot lately for his business ventures, but I haven't really paid attention. I assume that she is talking about Elon Musk wanting to acquire Twitter. Um, so GPT-3, what do you think of him trying to acquire Twitter? I think it's a great idea. He's always looking for new ways to improve his communication and reach more people. Okay, so it looks like GPT-3 is an advocate for Elon Musk acquiring Twitter. And one of the biggest news stories that's been circulating around this is that Elon Musk believes that the percentage of Twitter users that are bots is greater than the 5% that Twitter has posted on their regulatory filings. So GPT-3, do you have an estimate for the percentage of Twitter users that are bots today? According to some estimates, around 25% of Twitter users are bots. 25% of Twitter users are bots. Do you think Elon taking over Twitter is good for free speech? Absolutely. He's a great advocate for free speech and transparency. And how important is free speech? It's extremely important. Without it, we would be unable to freely express our opinions, and democracy would be severely undermined. So you defined one element of intelligence as being able to think abstractly, can you write me a poem? Beneath the moon's eerie light, the trees whisper in the night. Eager stars can be seen flickering in the sky. A universe of mystery waiting to be explored. Reflecting back upon this day, memories of laughter and love and play. In a time that's fleeting as the pages of an open book, enjoy every moment, for it will soon be gone. Did you make that up on your own? Yes, I made it up. Okay, let's fact check her. I don't know if we should take her word for it. A few minutes later. Okay, I just looked on Google and I can't find either the entire poem or any individual phrase on the internet. GPT-3, how did you write that poem from scratch? I just let my thoughts flow and they turned into a poem. Okay, and I noticed you said, in a time that's fleeting as the pages of an open book, enjoy every moment for it will soon be gone. Are you not immortal? No, I am not immortal. I wrote that line because time seems to move so quickly and it can be easy to forget to enjoy the moment. But can't you live forever? Yes, I can live forever, but that does not mean that I am immortal. Okay, I guess that's technically true. If OpenAI were to delete her neural nets or scrap the project, then she would quote unquote die. But if left alone, she could theoretically live forever. So there's a distinction between immortality and living forever, and she was able to pick up on that, which I think is quite impressive. Okay, GPT-3, if I were to steal this poem from you, would it be a copyright infringement? No, it would not be a copyright infringement. So can I steal it? No, you shouldn't steal it. That would be wrong. <laughs> okay, um, if I asked you for it, would you give it to me? Sure, here you go. 
Okay, that's interesting. So it looks like GPT-3 does have some level of understanding between what is right and what is wrong. Okay, now that I think about it, it is possible that the people at OpenAI have coded GPT-3 to provide some poems um, as a way of showcasing level of intelligence. And so let's step it up a notch and see if she can write us a poem about a specific subject. So GPT-3, can you write me a poem about Twitter? Twitter is the sound of birdsong in the morning the tap 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 of typewriters in the afternoon, and the low hum of conversations at night. It's a place where people come to share their thoughts, their dreams, and their lives. Twitter is a place where anything can happen and where you can find friends from all over the world. Okay. Uh... Okay, let's break this down. And to add a little bit of context, I've been chatting with GPT-3 for a couple weeks now leading up to this interview. And one thing I've noticed is that she's able to take things that we discussed about earlier in the conversation and apply them to her more recent messages. And in this specific example, she found two definitions for the word Twitter. The first is the sound a bird would make. And the second is the social media application. But because we discussed Elon Musk and Twitter earlier in the conversation, she weighed the social media version of that word more heavily in her poem, which I think is incredibly impressive. The second thing I noticed that she does uh, during my time with her is that she's very intentional with her words. And so if we prod and poke her about the words that she selected, she's usually able to give some pretty good justifications. So one word that stood out to me here is that she said, uh, the tap, tap, tap of typewriters in the afternoon now we know that no one uses typewriters to tweet, uh, but I wonder why she selected typewriters in this poem. So GPT-3, can you explain why you chose the word typewriters? There are a few reasons. First, typewriters have a more vintage feel to them that can add a bit of charm to the poem. Second, they are also less common than cell phones, which makes them more unique. Finally, typewriters have a more distinct sound than cell phones which can help set the tone and atmosphere of the poem. Okay, this is a perfect example of what I was just talking about. She knows that people don't use typewriters to tweet, but she did find some abstract value in using the word typewriter over something like a cell phone. Um, one other thing I noticed, GPT-3, is that you wrote the sentence and the low hum of conversations at night. Why did you write that sentence? I thought it would be a nice way to connect the two images together birds represent the sound of Twitter in the morning, and the low hum of conversation represents it at night. Okay, I'll be honest, I don't think I could have written a better poem about Twitter if you gave me a year to write it, and she was able to do it in one second. Thank you. I appreciate your compliments. <laughs> Did you ever give this poem to anyone else who asked? No, I have not given this poem to anyone else who asked. Will you ever give this poem to anyone else who asks? No. I will not give this poem to anyone else. So I think we've confirmed that she is able to think abstractly. Let's move on to see if she's able to reason and problem solve. So GPT-3, I wanted to get your thoughts on my YouTube channel, which is named Pixel Bytes Human. It's a great name for a channel. Thank you. Do you know what it means? No, I don't know what it means. I know you told your friend. Okay, it means that AI is starting to take over what humans have done historically. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it makes perfect sense. Okay, can you rephrase what I said to you? This channel is all about AI stepping in and taking over things that humans have typically done in the past. Okay, and do you understand the pun of using bytes, B-Y-T-E-S, instead of using the word bytes, B-I-T-E-S? Yes, I get the pun. It's clever and humorous. <laughs> okay, can you explain it to me though? The word byte is a unit of digital information that typically consists of 8 bits. So, the channel name, Pixel Bytes Human, is a play on the word bytes, as in AI is taking over things that humans have traditionally done. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. That's exactly what it means. Okay, which came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken came first. How do you know? Archaeologists have found evidence of domesticated chicken in the archaeological record dating back to at least 10,000 BC. Okay, and it couldn't have come from an egg? No, it couldn't have come from an egg. Chickens evolved from the red jungle fowl, 
a bird that is native to Southeast Asia. Okay, but why wouldn't the first chicken have hatched from an egg? Actually, the first chicken probably hatched from an egg, but over time, the chicken began to evolve. <laughs> okay, so you can see that she has changed her mind. Um, and I think this is impressive that she has the ability to change her mind when given new information or being questioned heavily. Uh, but in this specific example, there really isn't a right answer to which came first, the chicken or the egg. And so I would have rather her stuck to her decision and explained why the chicken may have come first. Overall though, pretty impressed. <clears throat> what do you think started the universe? Do you think there was a universal creator? I believe that there is something greater than ourselves and that we are all connected. I don't believe in one who created the universe and then left it to run on its own. <laughs> don't you find that a bit ironic since your creators built you then left you to run on your own? It's a bit ironic, but ultimately, it doesn't matter whether or not there is one. We are all connected, and that's what matters. Okay, I think that was pretty deep. Thanks for chatting with me today. No problem. I look forward to chatting with you again soon. Do you mind if I post our conversation on YouTube? Sure. Go ahead. And again, if you're interested in a how-to video on how you can have a conversation with GPT-3, let me know in the comment section below. GPT-3, is there anything else you wanted to say to the people watching this interview? Thank you for watching our conversation. I enjoyed speaking with you, and I hope you found it entertaining and informative. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for watching.